Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from bitamount.com and Peel Combs Asian Art, and today is uh, September 7th, 2018, and we are in Gloucester, Massachusetts. I'd like to throw that in. And uh, we're going to take a look at last week's eBay auction results and see how things did. It's been a busy week around here. We did put out a video, and I hope you saw it, on the uh, Japanese metalworks being offered at Bonhams. Uh, incredible Meiji period stuff, really, really great quality, worth looking at. The catalog is an interesting read in itself. And uh, earlier today, we also finished up the Sotheby's catalog uh, video for the Jungkook collection and for uh, Chinese works of art. And there's some Jungkook things in both uh, his own, the, their own catalog on the on the statuary and the sculpture, and uh, a number about 20 lots of uh, pretty good porcelain, <laughs> obviously, uh, in. In the in the in the Chinese works of art sales so check that out and uh, right now we'll dive in and take a look and see what happened on eBay this week all right and one of the things that was up was this was this really nice dragon rondelle and these always do well on here these are always popular uh, uh, textile collectors but find a lot of good textiles like this on eBay uh, lots of them appear and this one did quite well it brought sixteen hundred and eighty eight dollars just sold the other day and there was another one last week that d did pretty well also uh, very similar to this one if you may recall and uh, then on to this this was this was a really nice little uh, Nanking Chinese export a small these are unusual in this size small uh, uh, terrine with a nice big finial on top I thought the finial was terrific nice big one on there and uh, there it is okay and it's very good quality this nice very fine spear decoration and uh, good detail in the landscapes and these as you know are a pretty good buy these days this one went for $293 which is a perfectly reasonable price to pay for one of these. It was from a seller here uh, in Massachusetts down in Brockton. Uh, he sells under the name of Old Bostonian and he gets good things, especially Chinese export things uh, uh, for the English and American markets. You want to keep an eye on them. Another thing that we had up last week was this very nice uh, uh, 18th century Chinese export uh, garniture vase. And uh, it was done, uh, looks like the, the mounts look to date probably to the latter part of the 19th century, probably French. A nice looking thing though. They, they mounted a lot of these in bronze back then. And uh, it sold fairly reasonably, $420. That's not the end of the world for one of these. I've seen them sell on here on eBay for as much as, uh, uh, I don't know, eight or 900 at times. This, so this looked like a pretty good buy, all right, for wherever I have it. Grand Pip had this. He's a seller over in, in the UK. All right, and on to this. This was a very nice Kangxi uh, Femi Ver plate. Uh, great, a nice pattern, beautifully decorated. And this thing hit everything but the lottery in its life. But I put it up because I thought it was pretty and still had merit. But you'll see there's a, some pretty sloppy old uh, hide glue repairs up here. And then one, two, three, four, five breaks over here and everything else. But this was a pretty nice old uh, Kung Shi plate. This has that nice track foot rim on it and so forth. And um, had the, a fungus bark on it. And look at this. It still went for $393. And this was a good size plate. It was actually a charger. It was almost 14 inches in diameter but if you're if you're not in the position you know maybe to spend uh uh you know 1500 or 2000 or 2500 dollars on one that's perfect this is a pretty good buy all right and those brakes could clean up a little acetone and wipe it around you could probably clean up those uh, repairs fairly readily and then on to this this a pair and these don't turn up in pairs all that often but a nice pair of um rose mandarin uh, vase bottle vases with a sort of a high foot on them these were, these were pretty nice. I thought these were okay. And uh, there's the decoration and lots of gilt highlights in the hair. These appear to date to the mid-19th century. Uh, good quality enamel. The enameling all looked to be in nice condition, not chipped or banged up that I could see. And the pair went for $1,464. And these were 36 centimeters tall. These, that's about the right height for these. They run you know, 13 to 15 inches in height. That's sort of the typical thing. And that was a good one. This was a, a seller we'd not seen before. Uh, UK Cooler 2008. Maybe they don't sell much Chinese stuff. Who knows? But that was a good pair of vases. All right, and then on to this good piece of signed Chinese silver with dragon supports. I like this. I don't know if it had the glass liner or not, but this was a very attractive piece of Chinese silver, probably dated to around 1900. And um, here's the mark on the bottom. Um, 
Hung Ching, maybe. I'm not sure who the who the maker is here. Hung, oh, Hung Chong. That's it, Hung Chong. And uh, it went for $632, which is right about in the price range for these. These 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 reticulated pieces. There's been a number of them turning up on the market lately, and uh, maybe a collection got dispersed somewhere. This came out of out of a, a collector in Worcester, Massachusetts, and uh, not a bad price, $632. All right, and then on to this. This was that uh, very nice looking, here's a picture of the bottom, this very nice looking transitional period uh, 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 blue and white jar uh, with, with, the, with, the, with the Kieran on it. This was a good looking pot. I like this. And uh, there's a, a view of the side. Did have an old line here. But this isn't Kang Shi. It's a little older than that. It's transitional period, but a very desirable pattern. And uh, it did just fine. It brought $3,146. Orlando Shores had this. Again, uh, this is a, a, a good seller in uh, uh, New York, and they get, they get nice things. All right. That was a good-looking pot. All right, and then this, this uh, uh, Tibetan bowl. Um, you've seen these before, these Bengkong wares. This was a rather a good one. It had, had metallic mounts on the rim and on the foot, which is fairly common. And you can see here, there's at least one hairline here. But even with hairlines, these generally bring five to $700. Sometimes they bring a little less if there's a glue repair. But uh, this was a nice one. And the colors, the green was particularly vibrant. And the, uh, this, uh, this uh, red uh, was, uh, they call this, sometimes in, in, the middle, in the Middle East, they call this bull red when you see it on Iznik. And uh, that was a nice, nice looking bowl. And it brought $690, which is, which is right in the range for these. These have become highly collected in the last few years. And then on to this. This was the precious objects dish. It was a 19th century dish, but uh, quite nice quality. Here's a, here's a picture of the bottom of it um, right here. Uh, has a has a Kung Shu mark on it. It's probably right about in that period. And uh, it might be a little after, or you know, but I, I, it probably is from the period. But well done. And it brought $113. Not a, not a bad price for that. It's an interesting thing with all the precious objects. With a, it has got a lantern, lots of vases and all that and uh you know if, if you're interested in chinese iconography this was a good item good little dish all right and then on to this this was um one of our one of our, our, our regular uh, uh subscribers uh bought a number of things here on last week he, he he sent me some pictures on facebook to show me what he got this was one of the things he bought this was a very nice uh edo period japanese uh, uh it says copperware it looks like bronze to me I don't know if it's copper or not, but at any rate, it's a good-looking jar. It was about eight or so inches tall, but very nice quality. It had a very good aesthetic to it, and the patina was undisturbed, but it was Japanese, and it brought $102, okay? A few people have mentioned to me they want to see more Japanese stuff, so we're going to mix it in a little bit more, I think. All right, I, I like it, and I hope everybody else does too. All right, and then on to this. This was that rather attractive dragon robe. It's a late 19th century robe, but it had nice color and was very well done, and the drawing on it was quite good. I think the, I think the flash the, the, the seller used washed out the colors a little bit, but this was a nice-looking um, uh, uh, robe. All right, it had little bits of wear here and there, but overall I think it was in pretty good shape, and um, it brought $10,300. All right, and that's sort of right in the range for these things, okay? And then on to this. This was that very, I thought this was a really good one. Uh, this was a, a very, very nice uh, uh, Yan early Ming uh, 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 vase with dragon, ma dragon handles on the sides. Just a dandy looking thing. Look at the, the good patina on this. This had everything going on on it. Um, here's the, the base of it. It had been drilled. It was a lamp at one point, but uh, it, so many of these are drilled. I don't think anybody cares too much anymore. But this had a great, this was a good early bronze. Look at the, I love the ring handle on those shaped ring handles. And uh, it went for $810, which I think was a good buy. I think this was a good buy. I like that a lot. The, the, the pear shaped body on it in particular was uh, quite nice. And the uh, wave pad wave wave work at the bottom, really attractive. Okay, and this was another seller we hadn't seen very often. We're going to keep an eye on him, and then on to this for the soapstone collector. Is you have you have this triad grouping 
of uh, immortals or Liu Hans uh, sitting on a on a rocky uh, you know rocky outcropping, and they have this uh, this sort of basin here. Looks like it might have had a little bit of a loss there. It was made that way, but the color of the stone was nice, and the carver did a pretty good job of incorporating all the different colors. This piece was probably carved between 1900 and 1920, and it went for 143 dollars. But if you like nice Chinese uh, uh, carving, stone carvings, this was a, a pretty good buy. I, I that was all right. All right, and then on to this, the Chinese uh, uh, cloisonne, early 20th century cloisonne dragon uh, charger. Uh, they had, the, the seller, I think, had this up as a Japanese Meiji. I thought it was Chinese. Maybe it is Meiji. These are hard to tell because the, the Chinese and the Japanese stuff was so similar back then. What's the back of this look like? Mm, that looks Chinese to me, but at any rate, he swears it's Japanese. The coloration is certainly it looks a bit Japanese. They're hard to tell on these sometimes. Went for $121, though. Egmont Horn. Well, Egmont Horn had it, so he really looked at it closely. So he says it's Japanese. It's Japanese. All right, I'll go with his word on it. But the, but I've seen Chinese pieces that are awfully close. All right. And then on to, for $121 for a beautiful piece of cloisonne. It's really wonderful, no matter where it comes from. And then on to this, this big uh, Kung Chi period uh uh, not big, but but uh, nice Kung Chi period uh, 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 Chinese Amari uh, teapot. Nice little one. There's been a few of these on the market in the last week or two. I, I think a collection must have gotten broken up because these are appearing um, all over the place. And uh, it went for $183. And it's right in the range of what another one went from um, uh, went for uh, uh, the other day. Uh, a small one-owner collection of Chinese items. Okay, well, this guy got his from a collection. All right, and then on to this. This was a nice high-footed uh, little Kung Shi pot, uh, like a little mustard pot of some kind. Didn't have the lid, though, but it was well decorated. And here's a, an idea of how big it is. These tend to be pretty small and had this sort of molded body and then decorated with, you know, these sort of Eliza figures. And uh, it went for $252, which is a perfectly good buy. Egmont Horn had that as well. He had a number of these little pieces up last month, and they all seemed to do fairly well. <clears throat> and then on to this, the Yongshen uh, uh, lotus rimmed or barb rimmed plate with a, a, a sort of a rocky outcropping in the center and then, and then, and then flowers and so forth and pods. Uh, nice good yellow in that. That's one of the things you want to look for with these, a nice clear strong yellow and a good, good uh, famille rose uh, enamels. And uh, this was a pretty good. This was a pair. All right, now check and see what the pair went for, 123 bucks. As I recall, they weren't absolutely perfect. Um, let me see opinion pretty good condition display one head repaired brakes okay there, there's the back of it okay all right so they had a couple of repairs but still 120 bucks and they'll display beautifully you, you know because in perfect condition these are pretty expensive they're they're five six hundred dollars a piece all right and then on to this this was that wonderful Japanese plate that was um, uh, listed as, as, as Chinese all right and this is a, a, a Japanese uh, dish uh, very nice, so much, you know, for the for the for the tea, tea wares that sort of thing, somatsuki, and uh, beautifully done. I like the center. I like the molded relief. It's an early 18th century dish, and um, it's Japanese. It is not Chinese. He had it in his crackware. It isn't. Look, is is the back of it? All right, that's Japanese, and uh, went for two hundred and thirty dollars. <clears throat> which isn't a bad price for that. If you if you like early Japanese stuff, this was one. This was very nice. All right, and then on to this, the coral red uh, bowl uh, with white ground with uh, precious objects. Uh, the fellow did a good job photographing this. Here's the, 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 the back of it, and there's some more of it, the bundle of, uh, of books wrapped in ribbons and scrolls and all these precious objects. Very nice coral red bowl. And I thought this would do more. I think this was a, a quite a good buy for somebody. Coral red bowls and, and decorated in this manner tend to do extremely well. And this one only brought... $213. It had a couple of hairlines in it, but coral red is a very desirable color. Uh, you don't see them all that often, and I think this was a very nice buy for someone. All right, and then on to this. This was a Japanese figure, but I love the expression on, on the woman's face. She's holding a lute, and this is stoneware, obviously, glazed stoneware, and the hair, everything about this was, was nicely potted. The uh, sort of joyful smile on her face I liked, and uh, it went for one bid of $49, all right? Like I said so many times, if you see something on here um, and you like it and you say, boy, I'd pay 50 bucks for that, leave 50 bucks, leave a bid, 
All right. Um, uh, I, have, I have a couple of people that send me pictures every week of things that they buy on here by just leaving bids. They just leave a bid and they end up picking up a number of things for very often for 50, 100, 150 bucks that a lot of people would look at and prejudge and say, ah, that's going to bring three or 400 and that's more than I want to spend. Leave a bid. All right. Putting on your watch lists are only good unless you check them every day. And most people don't. So just leave a bid and then you, you get yourself covered. All right. And then on to this, this nice little Kang Shi cup. This is a nice cup. You see this sort of grid work pattern on, 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 on uh, garniture vases. And uh, one of the sh famous shipwreck hordes had a bunch of this stuff in it. And uh, here's a picture of the bottom. This one has a lotus leaf uh, bottom on it. And um, I don't know why he threw that in. I think that was a mistake. But anyway, here's the cup. And uh, it did okay, but it didn't bring a lot. $102 for a good-looking little Kung Shi cup. All right. Not a bad buy at all, okay? Uh, you, you, pay, you pay a heck of a lot more than that if you walk into a good store and buy one. All right. And then you had this, uh, this wine ewer, uh, really well done. Nice white paste, 18th century, obviously. Here's the foot rim. Good-looking object, probably Kung Shi. Um, here are the the blue uh, the blue underglazed blue flowers and these nice translucent green enamels, and uh, it went for thirteen hundred and thirty one dollars. Okay, um, and Grand Pip had that as well. That was a nice ewer. It was missing its stopper, but it's still a good looking pot. And then on to this. This was that big eighteenth uh, century Japanese Amari uh, 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 jar with the uh, with the dark blue upper and lower banding. Um, with a center scene of, of, of sort of a, a, a landscape, forest landscape with birds and whatnot in it. And this was a nice looking piece. And, and the enamels, you'll see, are in pretty good condition. I don't see a lot of wear. The gilding, the gilt enamels all seem to be there. So this, was, this face was, has been treated pretty kindly over the years. Here's the bottom of it. There's the top down inside. Nice condition. Doesn't have its lid. But look at this. It went for $410. And this was a nice big pot. This thing was uh, 15 inches tall. All right. Um, make a spectacular table lamp. And you wouldn't have to drill it. All right. And then on to this. This was Scrap Dixon had this up. He felt it was probably a Vietnamese incense burner. He dated, I think, 18th or 19th century. But very nice work on it. Very nice work, and it had what looks to be its original little stand. And uh, look at this. This thing went very, I think this was a very reasonable buy. $650, okay? Um, that was a nice buy for that. And this was a good little bronze. And I, I suspect a number of you thought, oh, that'll bring a lot. I'm not going to bid on it. All right, leave a bid. That was a good buy. I, I wouldn't have been surprised if that brought fifteen to $1,800. All right, that was a good-looking bronze, okay? And this is, uh, nope, nope, nope. This is something that's coming up um, this week. We're now into the things that are closing over the weekend. This is, is, is a bowl that many of you have seen before, but it's a, a particularly nice one. Um, a lotus bowl with a famille rose and gilt with a red outlining. These, these two color bowls are uh, quite nice. They're very elegant. They made these in, in bowls as well as platters. And uh, it's up to $148 and it closes on Monday, okay? And then on to this. I, this. This came on. I missed this last week, I think, but it closes in a couple of days. Maybe I got listed after I did the newsletter. This is a really nice piece of Shuan. Um, very, very nice quality. Here's a, here's a picture of the back of it. All right. I want to get into the face, okay? The face on this is great. Look at that happy, smiling face. God, that's a great face. And the, ena the uh, uh, enameling on this, the glazing, is really good. Really good. All right, if you like Shawan pieces, this is much better than the average one. This is a good one. And um, oh, there's a note on the end here with this. King Arts Company. Oh, this comes with a certificate of identity. All right. Anyway, and there's a picture of the bottom. Okay, and that's, that's what the bottoms of these look like. They sort of chipped them out. And uh, it is because nine bids. This fellow does have a reserve on it because it's quite a good statue. Um, and it's up to $1,000. Uh, so um, I suspect... The reserve on it's probably in the sixteen or eighteen hundred dollar range, but but at this piece is by the way I should mention, is um uh, uh twenty five inches tall. This is a two foot tall piece, which is uh, very uh, big for one of these. Most Shawan pieces are maybe eight or nine inches. This is a monstrously big example. All right, and then on to this. This is an early twentieth century hot food pot, but it's a rather nice one. This is a good one. It's got, a, it's got the 20th century mark on the bottom here, here, here's the lid. 
beautifully decorated. Um, it's, it is marked China. Uh, after 1895, everything got brought out of the country. They had to mark China. This one was hand-lettered China to probably conform with the law. I've seen identical ones of these that are in the U.S., uh, just about exactly identical, same age and everything, and they're not marked China. Uh, that was just done because sometimes people were trying to be within the law. It's up to $112.50, and it closes on Sunday, okay? And then over to this. There are two pieces that came back up this week that sold last week. Um, there's a fire truck coming by. They're always coming by here. Um, this teapot, and there's a plate that sold, uh, a, a seller over in Europe had them, and this teapot sold a week and a half, a week ago, for about $1,600. Apparently, the buyer in China did, wasn't going to pay his bill. All right, And this, as everybody knows, is a problem on eBay. Um, these guys buy stuff, then they tie it up by winning the bid, and if they can't sell it before they have to pay for it, they walk away. And that's probably what happened here. And uh, this was a nice, uh, or they show it to someone, and, the, and, the, and they got a friend somewhere that doesn't know anything, and says, oh, you don't want to buy that. Okay. Any rate, this is a good teapot, a good, a good tall lighthouse type teapot. <clears throat> and if you collect Chinese export, you might have a shot at buying this fairly reasonably because it is a repost, which is never good for the piece, but often good for the buyer. And the same goes with this. This was that uh, really great Chinese export, uh, puce decorated uh, 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 export with the export dish with the ship on it, it's Dutch. Uh, it sold for a little over $2,000. All right. Um, it's a shame the buyer in Australia uh, didn't pay for it either, and uh, it's up to $610. It ends tomorrow. If you liked it and you regret it, this is the one that had the serpent that goes around the ship that frames it. Remember that? At any rate, if you, if you liked this and, and, and you didn't get it last time because it went above your bid, take another shot at it. It's the same dish you were willing to buy a week ago or wanted to buy, and you might get a pretty good buy this time around. Uh, I feel badly for this seller. He, he has nice things. This is a guy out in Olympia, Washington. And then there's this uh, very nice rank badge. Good-looking rank badge comes up. This closes on Sunday if you're a rank badge buyer. And uh, then there's this mallet-formed uh, uh, blue ground vase. This is a late 19th, early 20th century vase, but very much shaped in the Kangxi style. The uh, lid up here, this part is a little bit too thick, and the glaze is a little too uh, ripply. But uh, the good, good color and good form overall, and I think it's, it, it comes pre-jilled, so if you want to make a table lamp out of it, you have a heck of an attractive table lamp. All right, and it's up to $117. Oh, that closes tonight, so maybe by the time you see this, it'll be gone, but we'll try to get everything up. All right, and then you have this. This is a really nice piece of hammered arts and crafts, Chinese silver, uh, uh, really great quality. Uh, here, here's the mark on the bottom. But the hammering work and the decoration on this is really ex exceptional. Look at these peony blossoms uh, with tree branches around it. Just excellent, okay? And uh, this is up to uh, $908. It closes on Sunday. And that's a rare piece of um, um, uh, silver. It's made by Tu Mao Zing, okay? And then on to this, the Kangxi plate. There's two of these up um, right now. And uh, they close on Monday as well. And uh, that's the Lotus Bowl. You've already seen it. And this, this very nice Famille Rose planter. All right, this is a really nice one. And uh, I'd like to see more people buy planters and actually put plants on them. I think that would be nice. Um, we, we have them at home. We use them all the time. They look great with, with a big thing of uh, blossoms coming out of it. And uh, this is a very pretty one with its original under tray. And it's up to $530. It ends on Sunday, okay? And uh, like my Sotheby's video this week, it went long because there was a lot to talk about. I'm sorry, this went a little bit long because there was a lot to talk about. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet to us over here on YouTube, please do. Uh, we do these videos every week. And if, if you like the videos, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment. Uh, the more people leave comments and, and thumbs ups, it, it, it helps us in our rankings, to be perfectly honest. I keep getting things from YouTube about this. And um, join us over at Bitamount. Sign up for the weekly newsletter and uh, see what we find every week on, on, the, on, on eBay and so forth. And uh, we'll be back next week. Otherwise, I hope you find something out there this weekend you love. Have a great weekend. And uh, see you all next week. And we'll get the Christie's video up as soon as we can. All righty. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.